Hi, I want to show you seven ways you can enhance group by one of the most powerful functions in Python. So let's get started. So I've loaded in pandas, seaborn, and numpy, and I'm bringing in the tips data set from seaborn. So the first thing I want to do is show you just some few different functions. If you're not familiar with this data set, let me just give you a quick look. You have here to look at that data set. And you can see we have total build, tip, sex, smoker, day, time, and size. A mix between categorical and numerical data. So let's group. We can group by, let's group by sex using the group by function with our data frame variable. And if we group by that, you know that you're going to get a group by um, object here. And then we can add functions to the end of that. So I'm going to use first. And you can see we get the first instance of the information. You can see where we have female and male here. We can do last. And one of the most powerful ones is int. After you've sorted you know, your, your, your data set and you want to maybe find the, the nth largest, escape in A, and I'm going to sort the data set. So we're going to sort the data set by total bill. Let me just correct that mistake. And you can see now it's ascending, and I'm going to change this to ascending equals false. And then now we have our ascending data set. Save that over and then run this and you, you'll you see we'll have a different result. Now remember that this can be changed. We have the 10, so, but if we change this to one, we are getting the second highest instead of the maximum value. Uh, just as a data check, I'm gonna bring out the head of our data frame and you can see the highest male is here, the second highest male here, and by using this in uh, to the first, we get this data set. And by using zero, you would get the max. Okay, let's go to size and group. I'm just going to just quickly copy this, bring this down. And if we just wanted the size, we could definitely get the size of that group just by using that function and you can see how many male and female are there in the data set. Same as you would use for a value count. Also, we can get the number of groups. So if I copy this, if you have a very large data set and you're not sure of how many different uh, variables you have. So like say if we have the word day and we wanna know how many existing groups we have, we use in group and we run that and you can see we have for day we have this for size and if we replace day here we have four days in the week instead of the seven. Let's continue on. So now we're going to start using the aggregation function for multiple aggregations ag across columns. Uh, so this is going to be really important to use. So I'm just going to take my group by here, go back down. And then what I'm going to do is use AGG for our aggregation. And then I can pass in a list. And we can pass in mean and you can also pass in your max. Maybe I'll also pass in the standard deviation. And if I run this, you're going to get that across the whole data frame with these particular metrics. You can also use NumPy with this. So if I didn't want to use these particular keys, we can always use NumPy and we need to use an aggregation. So I'm just going to use sum and run that. And now you can see you get the sum. Either way is fine, whether you put it in the, the indicator by a text or you put in the NumPy function. The next thing we want to do is use a similar method 
to have different aggregations across different columns. So maybe I wanna isolate my total bill with the curly brackets. I'm gonna indicate total bill, and then I am going to use that as the key, and then I'm going to pass the value in, and I'm gonna put a list here, and I'm gonna pass in a mean and median, and then I'm gonna take another column here, and I'm gonna pass in key and value, I have a size column, so I'm going to do size, and then I am going to pass in maybe min and max for this. And if I run that, now you can see each column has a different aggregation in that group five. Next, we can get deeper filtering with the function get groups. So I'm just going to again copy this. So I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to use get groups to filter. For example, we know if I do if I do the sum here, we get all of our data summed up, and then we have the two categories. However, we can specify which category we can do out of those two groups by using get group and then passing in female. And now what you're going to get is the whole data set with only female. So that's going to filter without the group by but just allow you to filter it. But there's no aggregations here. So the way you want to really utilize this is by having more than one index in that group. At the moment, I have this just group by female, but maybe I want to group by passing in a list here. I'm going to group by sex and size. Put a little bit more here so we can see this. Sex and size, and then you know, we know our sizes are one to six, I believe. So I can pass in the female and the size number. So if I run that, it looks like I made a mistake somewhere. Oh, we need to, let me just show you what this says. Must supply a tuple for multiple grouping keys. So I just need to encapsulate that in a parentheses and run that again. And then now you're going to get the total bill group by female and two. So that is a way to filter with your group by. Next, what we can do, we can go here and we can talk about numerical filters. So let me make some space here. So for numerical filters, we also will have to use Lambda. So we'll also use this next part here, but let me just show you with filter. So I can do df.group by, pass in size maybe, with, and then use filter. And then what I want to do is I want to use the lambda function, lambda, and x. And I want to know x where the, maybe the total, total bill is greater than and, uh, lambda x here. Uh, let me do the syntax correctly. x and where x is greater than 17. So we're, we're going to iterate through all of the bills and only give me a bill that is over 17 unless we need to encapsulate this in parentheses. And then because we want to bring back all of the results, so I'm going to use that. And this should give us a filter. So now we can see all of the bills that were greater than $17. Next, we can also use Lambda again. So let's do a Lambda function here. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do a df.group by, and I'm gonna group by sex. And what I'm going to do is use my aggregation here, and then pass in a dictionary and I'm going to just use a key value here. So for total bill, say here is the key and what I want to bring in is mean and mean and our median. And then now I pass in another key which will be size. And for size, I'm going to use lambda so we could even divide the mean by the standard deviation, x and x, x dot mean, divided by x dot standard deviation. Looks like I have, 
I made a little mistake in here, not median. So you can see now we have that lambda function and then we have x divided by standard deviation. Now the last one I want to do is show you the benefit of doing visuals with group by. So let's change this to visualizing group by. If we run this, and now what we can do is I do df dot group by, and then I group by sex, and then all I need to do is plot this. And you can see it it turns into like quite a mess, but we can we can always use different kinds of graphs. So I'm going to use a histogram. So now we can see we have a histogram there. Of course, maybe one of the better ones would be we can use the dot box plot here. And now you will get these box plots based on the two groupings. And then if we use a histogram without plot, and let me just do that here, we get a better grouping. Let me just show you this. So if we use hist, this function, then you will get individual histograms, which is much more uh, nicer with the subplot. So those are just a few ways to enhance your group by. I hope that was helpful.